In this video, I'm gonna give you a three-dimensional tour of the Old Testament Tabernacle of Moses. And if you can't tell, I am super pumped up about this video and this entire series. I can't remember a time where I've been this excited about a series here on The Beat because over the next several videos, I'm gonna take you inside of the tabernacle and we are going to explore all of the symbolism of each piece of furniture in this tabernacle. We're gonna talk about how they were all a foreshadowing and a type of the high priestly work of Jesus Christ, representing the person and the work of Jesus Christ. We're gonna look at the symbolism of each of these particular pieces of furniture, but most importantly, I'm gonna show you the present day application, the practical application of this Old Testament Tabernacle of Moses. It's gonna be a great series. I can't wait. Part one coming up today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome back to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, it's a pleasure. Hey, if you wanna know the entire story of the Bible, I've got a free ebook. Just simply click the link in the description box below. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing. Hit that little bell notification so you'll be notified every single time a new video drops. All right, let's jump in. I'm super excited. I can barely wait. So before I take you inside and give you a three-dimensional tour of the entire Old Testament tabernacle of Moses, I need to set this thing up. So in this video, we're going to talk first and foremost about the purpose of the tabernacle. Now, if we want to understand that, we need to read Exodus chapter 25 verses 1 through 8. So let's read it now. It says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings. Accept the contributions from all whose hearts are moved to offer them. Well, let's just stop right there. God is basically saying, Hey, I don't want your money if it's not something that you can give from the heart. If you can't give gold and silver and all the different things that they're going to offer to build this edifice and build this tabernacle, he says, I don't want it. And that's a good present day application for us. God owns everything. And if we can't give to help the body of Christ with a willing heart, God says, keep it, keep your money because I don't need it. Let's keep going. It says here, here is a list of sacred offerings you may accept from them. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen and goat hair for cloth, tanned ram skins and fine goat skin leather, acacia wood, olive oil for the lamps, spices for the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, onyx stones and other gemstones to be set in the ephod and the priest's chest piece. Now here is the key and this is the purpose of why God wanted them to build the tabernacle. In the last verse, have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live or dwell among them. Do you see this? Here is a holy God wanting to have fellowship with sinful people. And that's the entire purpose of the Old Testament tabernacle. God is basically saying, I am perfect. I am holy. You are dirty. You are imperfect. You are sinful. However, I love my people enough that I want to have fellowship with you. I want to live among you. I want to dwell in your presence and want you to experience my presence. So he says, I want you to build me this sanctuary so that I can dwell among you. And my friend, the application here is the fact that no matter how sinful you and I are, here's a nation of people that were coming out of a pagan culture in Egypt with all sorts of sin and God says, I still want to have fellowship with you. So no matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, no matter what you've thought, God still desires to dwell with you. Now, before we jump into the actual 3D tour that I'm gonna give you in about 30 seconds, just hold on, let's now talk about the worth of this tabernacle. Now, I want you to notice here that God says in Exodus chapter 25, be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. So you have to understand that this tabernacle was a copy of the heavenly tabernacle 
or the heavenly temple. And so it was very important for Moses and the children of Israel to build it exactly as God had specified in Exodus chapter 25 all the way through 40. And so many scholars have estimated that if we were going to build this tabernacle today, it will be well over a hundred million dollars in worth, which lets us know that God says, I am a king, I am royalty, and I need to be treated as such. Okay, so now we're going to go in and actually take a look at this tabernacle of Moses. Come on with me. I'm going to take you inside. All right, so this is the tabernacle of Moses. Now, this tabernacle consisted of three primary parts. You had the outer court, which as you can see here was closed off by curtains and um, pillars. And then there was a gate that people would enter into. Inside of this outer court, there was really only two pieces of furniture. You see that there is a bronze altar of, of sacrifice. And then beyond that, there is a bronze laver or washing bin. Now, the dimensions of this are 150 feet long and 75 feet wide. So it wasn't really that big, which makes sense because they had to pick this tent up and uh, tear it down and set it up and take it with them everywhere they traveled for 40 years in the desert, in the wilderness. And so it makes sense that it really wasn't a very large structure. Now, the second part of this tabernacle is not only the outer court, but it's the inner court. Now, the inner court consisted of two rooms. You have the holy place, which I'll take you through all of this in just a second. The holy place, which was 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. Then beyond that was the most holy place or the holy of holies. And that was just a 15 feet by 15 feet square. And so now I'm going to take you through the tabernacle step by step as if you were an Old Testament worshiper experiencing this as well as a priest as well. All right, so here we go. So if you were a worshiper in the Old Testament, you would enter through these gates and you would bring an animal where you would be sacrificing that animal. So you would bring your animal. And once again, when we go through the other videos in the series, I'm going to go into much more depth. This is just an initial introduction and a 3D tour so that we can get an idea of what this structure is all about. So you come here and essentially what you would do is that you would offer your animal right here and you would lay your hand on it, slaughter the animal, and then you would take the animal over to here on this table and the priest would cut the animal up into pieces and then the priest as well as the, uh, essentially they would put the offering of the animal right in here. And let's see if I can zoom in a little bit so that you can see it. They would put the animal's offering right in here and you can see some pieces right there where they put the animal and the sacrifice right there. So that would be the very first thing that the worshiper, the Old Testament worshiper would experience. Now, uh, we'll go into much more depth about all of this, but just an overview. So now when you go past here, the worshiper was not permitted to go any further than simply bringing their sacrifice. Only priests and high priests were able to go anywhere further from the outer court into the inner court. Now, the priest, before going into the inner court, had to wash themselves because they were defiled. They had blood on their hands. They had dust on their feet. And so they were responsible for washing themselves up, which was obviously symbolic of the fact that God says, if you're going to have fellowship with me, you can't just come in any kind of way that you want to. You have to be cleansed. You have to be pure to come into my presence. And so there is some confession of sin and different things that we have to do before we can have fellowship with God. We'll talk about all of that whenever we analyze each one of these pieces of furniture. So now we are ready to go in, my friend, to the holy place. So as you can see here, the holy place, uh, it's covered with some, uh, with some fabric. We'll talk about that when we get there. And there is a 
a beautiful veil that we can walk right into. And once again, remember, the priests were the only ones that were permitted to go into the holy place. And as you can see, in this holy place, there are three pieces of furniture, all of which have rich symbolism and depict the person and work of Jesus Christ. And so as you can see here, there is a menorah or a golden lampstand that was filled with oil every single morning and every single evening. And the light would have to be uh, shining and burning 24-7, right? So that was one of the priest's responsibility every single day was to trim these lamps and keep the fire burning. Now, on the other side is the table of showbread. And here you have, I can't wait till we get to this lesson. Here you have um, uh, loaves of bread, 12 loaves of bread. You have some pitchers for the wine and they were to offer um, sacrifices and drink offerings and pouring out the wine on the altar and so on and so forth. By the way, let me also mention that these bars, uh, these frames right here are about 27 inches wide and 15 feet high, I believe. And they were made out of wood and then overlaid with pure gold. So you can imagine, this is just a beautiful display of what this room actually looked like as best we can figure out. And then now if we keep on moving a little bit forward, you can see that there was an altar of incense. And this is where the priest would come twice a day and they would offer their prayers to the Lord, and as the incense was rising, that represented their prayers rising up to God, all right? And so there you have it. Now, the moment that we've all been waiting for, my friend, this is where only the high priest would come one time a year on the Day of Atonement. You can find out more about that in Leviticus 16, and it's called the Holy of Holies, and this was separated by a veil and on that veil, you see um, there was a beautiful embroidery of, um, of uh, cherubim that were uh, surrounding the throne of God. So let's enter into the Holy of Holies. I don't know about you, but I'm getting, I'm getting some warm and fuzzies right now because, my friend, this is where the presence of God dwelled amongst his people. The high priest would go in here one time a year and he would offer sacrifices for the people's sin. Now, inside of this, which we'll talk about when we get there, um, there were a few things that were inside of this Ark of the Covenant. There was the Ten Commandments that were literally written by the finger of God. You also had Aaron's staff or rod that had budded in the wilderness. We'll talk about that as we get there, so don't worry. And then you also had a pot of manna as well. And so this represents the Shekinah glory of God in this room. Let me give you another visual of this so that you can see just the shining Shekinah glory of God. Notice that when we go into this room, we can see that God is just shining. His glory and his presence and, his, and, and everything about him is, is, is radiating so that the high priest would know for sure that he was in the presence of God. God. So let's back our way out of this entire wonderful, beautiful tabernacle of Moses. And there you have it, folks. That is the tabernacle of Moses. And we're going to be studying this over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Okay, my friends, so that is it for this first introductory video. Hopefully, I whet your appetite and you got super excited about what we're gonna learn. We just scratched the surface. And so what I'm gonna do, because I love you all and I don't want you all to have to wait an entire week to get a new video, I'm gonna keep these videos coming out once every two days. It's gonna be a lot of work for me, but I'm excited about it. So expect the next video on Sunday. Now, it's important that you really watch every single one of the videos 
in this series as we're going to talk about literally everything in this tabernacle. We're going to talk about how each piece of furniture was constructed. We're going to talk about the symbolism behind it. We're going to talk about how Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment of every single detail of this tabernacle. And as I said earlier, you're going to learn the present day practical application and how you can apply this to your life on a daily basis. Let's go. I'm super pumped. I'll see you all in two days for the second video in this series on the Old Testament tabernacle of Moses. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.